Hey guys, welcome back to Golden Lion, where today I need an upgrade. <laughs> so you know that this PC down here is a um, is a dinosaur. It's ancient. Uh, let me just show you. So this is what I'm talking about. Let's just forget my cable management. You 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 you, di you didn't see that. Two things that defines this di computer as a dinosaur. One, um, yeah. It has that. And two, do you see this sticker? That sticker is the Intel sticker from like two, th yeah, there it is. The sticker from like 2010. <laughs> so yeah, new PC is um is kind of a given at this point. It's got this teeny little, teeny tiny little i3 that I, I can't even record on properly, much less stream. No GPU, uh, this little 220 watt power supply that can barely run the thing. So yeah, I need I need an upgrade. So this is kind of like a tutorial on how to make a bang for the buck gaming PC. I mean, I know I'm in no position to, do, to make this video, but this is more for me. This is just showing you guys the new rig. I've done a lot of research over the past, like, I don't know, year, maybe. Help people build parts for stuff. I've done other things, but this is my first PC build. I'm going to be building this. So, I got one of the parts for free. Let me show you it. Yeah. It's a case. So this case is the Cooler Master Masterbox TD500 Mesh? Airflow? I don't know. It's... I'll put the text of what it is on the bottom of the screen right now. So let me put this back down because it's really heavy. I can't put it on my knee either because my knee hurts. So what we're going to look for right now is the parts. I've already kind of got a list going of them right now. And I'm just going to show you guys so that if you want... Oh, wow, that made my face white. So if you want to build a budget streaming PC for as low as I could get it while still not being a bare bones PC... Uh, this is what I would recommend. First, let's go on a good old Amazon. Let's start. Let's start with motherboard. I'm gonna go with a B450 motherboard, but I'm gonna go micro ATX with this one right here. This uh, gigabyte board has everything I'll need. It has an extra PCIe slot down here, if you can see that, so that I can add a capture card if I need to, and four DIMM slots, dual channel support. This is the motherboard that I'm gonna be going through. It's get best bang for the buck. $80 board. It looks amazing with all the components it has. It has this right here. This might look like a, a heat sink right here, but that's actually a thermal guard for my M.2, which we'll get in in a sec. Quality of life upgrade. It's great. I'm going with this board. By the way, I will be adding this up with the good old calculator, so that I'll give you guys a final total for how much this is. Alright, next we're going to go for the CPU. I'm going with a Ryzen 5 2600, $191? Why do we get this processor for like 120 bucks before COVID and now it's 190 I don't believe it. Whatever, we're going with this. It's a second gen processor so it'll work with my board, but it's got 6 cores, 12 threads, has plenty of power. Next is my storage. So I'm gonna be going with this right here. It's a 500 gigabyte uh, Samsung NVMe, which will just, I, I've fallen in love with NVMe's. They just link straight to your motherboard, no SATA, no nothing. And this is 60 bucks for 500 gigabytes, which is plenty of what I need to start. And then I can add on another, another SSD if I need to in the future. Next is the PSU. I'm gonna be going with this, with this one. EVGA Supernova, 80 plus gold, which I love. Uh, 650 watt. It's fully modular, has a nice quiet fan, another 80 bucks, well spent. Next is the RAM, which I will not be getting off of Amazon. I'm going to be getting some nice Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM. Now I'm going to be starting with 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz for that Ryzen processor, loves those high speeds. Don't want to go with 2000 hertz or 3000, that extra 200 does go a long way. 16 so i have two sticks and then with those extra two dim slots i'm going to add in two more and i'm going to get these white ones because i think they look nice and again white case white theme whatever and uh 88 bucks right the cooler i'm going to be going with this right here it's a nice 120 millimeter liquid cooler now i know why 120 millimeter cooler 
Why would you do that? Well, I want as little thermal problems as I can get without like hard lines like the green. But I want to have to upgrade in the future. This is a budget build. I don't have a big budget right now. So this one will cool it down. I'll have a, not a lot of thermal problems with my CPU. Next is the GPU, which I'm I'm so sad about. To be honest. GPUs are so expensive right now. Like if I go to Amazon and search up a 1650 Super, GTX 1650 Super, which is the bare minimum because again, I'll get to that in a sec. This is $190, $190. Now what is this garbage? $500, $300 for the Zotac one, which I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I don't trust Zotac. $500 almost six hundred and twenty dollars five hundred dollars it's ridiculous it's just ridiculous so i'm gonna be getting mine used <sighs> it's the one thing that i would recommend getting used at this point get one that you trust don't just go buying a gpu willy-nilly all right what have i got here this changes every day for the record i'm just putting that out there i've gone on this site like four times in the past week and it's changed every single time. Ooh, what's this one? MSI, this is the one I want. Okay, not gonna lie. I love how this card looks. This, I love how this card looks. This GTX 1660 card from MSI. I think it looks great. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Oh, uh, this is gonna kill me. $816, all right. I think what really killed me was the GPU and the, and the CPU. It hurts my soul. And obviously you're gonna need thermal paste, cords, whatever you need, you're gonna need that stuff. So just think about all that. I'll put all this stuff, by the way, in the description below, the links where I got it. And I'm gonna build it for you and we're gonna test it. Let's get to that. Okay, so quick interval. Oh, and by the way, sorry about this ghetto recording setup. The world didn't give me much to work with today. So I told you that I was going with a Ryzen build instead of an Intel build, and I was going with a 1650 Super as my bare minimum GPU. I'm about to explain that to you. Um, imagine that these, as you can see, they say GPU, CPU. Imagine these are your components here. You start a game and you start using up the components. Now that's just the game. That filled up about half of each, by the way. Nah, maybe a little bit more. Gaming takes a lot of GPU, doesn't it? Now, that's just gaming, but now we're gonna have to include streaming and recording. Now, this is why I was gonna go with a Ryzen build, is because an Intel build is made for gaming and performance. So you're gonna get a solid, like, five, six percent more from Intel. Once you fire up OBS and you start streaming, recording, compiling images together, animations, whatever. This is already almost full. Ryzen is different. Ryzen has a specific skill for multi-core processing, which means it spreads out the load very evenly. So that means it takes a heck of a lot off of my CPU here. Now I have to include one last thing in here, and that is encoding. Now, as you can see, these are almost full. So, if I do encoding, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not gonna do that. This is my kitchen table. I'm not gonna do that. But with the 16 series and higher, minus the original 1650, that one doesn't count. I have one more cup. Now this comes with your GPU. This is an encoder chip. And what I can do is I can fit in a lot of the load into this one. And again, I like the visuals. So now the CPU has a lot more room to add in more frames or add in more animations or do a lot more that can up your streaming quality. These were some of the very strategic choices I made when putting the system together so that I could push as much out of my components as possible. Back to the video. All right, so it's been about like two, three weeks since I ordered all of this stuff and it finally all came. And I am going to time lapse this build with you guys with a friend of mine. Yes, you're building it with me. No, no, why are you even here? So, as you can tell, this is my first PC build. 
And to be honest, I know a lot about PC parts, nothing about building them. So I brought in the quote unquote Calvary. This is Christian, who will be in my cameraman today. Go ahead and say hi. Hello, I don't know why I'm here. Please help. So I'm not gonna put you through the pain of building this with me for the next hour, God knows how long. I'm gonna time lapse it for you. Back to Amazon. Ready? First <gasps> test. Oh. Oh. That is looking sick. That came on. Lights are all on. Oh, look. There's actually RGB here in the back on the motherboard. I didn't even know that. That's sick. All right, cool. Ram's on. Fans are spinning. Hold on. Front RGB isn't working. Ah. This is great. Wonderful. Power on. Test two. Hey! We got the front fans. Oh, they're like... Alright! This actually going, looks pretty sick. They're going between orange and green, the front fans. Um, I got this case used, so that's not very surprising. <laughs> you can't see the infinity. Well, you can kind of see the infinity mirror. Yeah, on right here. Inside. But you gotta admit, this is pretty good. And now let's get to testing. So, let's get straight into testing. Uh, don't mind how crappy my camera looks right now. Uh, setting it up on the new PC was not fun, but as difficult as it was to set up, I've got the PC built, OBS running, games installed, and what I'd like to do is put this through a real stream test. And I don't mean like a little stream test. I'm gonna run this through the gutter. So basically, I'm throwing everything I have at it. This is my baseline stream. So don't mind the whole trippy OBS thing in the background. I've got an animated border, I've got a chat window, I've got animated alerts, images, capture i mean you could just see down here look at look at all of these different alerts and all that kind of stuff plus i have a second scene here with a webcam another chat window more images full screen webcam this is a pretty okay stream and i would like to see how it will run with some games running so there are two games i'm going to be running with this valorant which is a very gpu heavy game and minecraft which is a very cpu heavy game basically seeing what this pc can do whatever you throw at it so uh, let's start with Minecraft, shall we? Alright, so it's the next day. I had to do a bunch of configuring and stuff. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to display my FPS on the screen that I have. But, let me prove something to you. I have Minecraft up right now in small screen, and you can see I have this monitor display right here that is showing me my current FPS. So, I can monitor it, you guys just can't see it. So, let's join a server and see what FPS we get. Right, I am in... CPU is at like 35% and I'm running 40, just about 60 FPS in this game. I can see drops down to like 52 frames and stuff like that, but nothing super intense. And that just might be extra blocks loading into the game or something like that. Yeah, there it goes. It just went up to 86 frames, 94 frames, that's ridiculous. Let's, let's crank the quality and stuff. Alright, everything is pretty much cranked. There we go, those stupid shadows are gone. But I'm running anywhere from 100 FPS to about 70. I think that those 50 FPS spikes we have were just loading into the game. Running a completely smooth game and no smooth stream, no drop frames whatsoever. Let's, let's try something else. I'm gonna run a test. I'm gonna run a transition while in game. I saw it dip down to 78, but that could have been just extra polygons loading in the game. Let's um, let's try something else. Let's try Valorant. That's the that's the really GPU heavy game that I have. I'm hoping that this is capturing properly. I'm running at about 70. I can see the firing range in Valorant. Still hit sitting around 70. Hit up to 80 a second ago. The lowest it's dropped is 68. 
Uh, let me try something. Let me hit a transition while in game. Let me do this. Nope. Nothing. Not a drop frame. Alright! Cool! That's all I needed. So basically what this proves is if you want a budget setup for gaming and streaming in 2021 with all the awful prices and stuff right now, this is probably the way to do it. It cost me just around a thousand-ish dollars. I also spent a little bit too much. I spent a little bit too much on the RAM as well as the cooler. You can go with just the stock cooler that comes with it and it'll do just fine. I just wanted to get some really good cooling in this because the thermals in my room aren't amazing. And you could spend a little bit less on RAM. Let me look it up. So my RAM down here costs about 90 bucks for 16 gigs. And you don't need to spend that. <laughs> You can get this right here that um, costs a little bit cheaper and it'll do the exact same thing just minus the RGB and this is $10 cheaper for this. And also the case, my case, what was it? What is it right now? This case I got used and it was, it's so ridiculous. It's amazing. It's got great airflow, all that type of stuff, but you don't need that. You need something that will start it off quick and easy. You don't need something like this. I got this for free. How much is this one right now? Yeah, this case is um 120 bucks. <laughs> and you don't need that. You do not need that for a setup like this. So I found another one for you. It's 50 bucks. It's got a nice front panel. It's got great I.O. And I, I wanted one that looked good. This one has plenty of expandability for whatever you needed to do. You can put more fans in it, you can put, and it's 50 bucks instead of 120 bucks. If you want to save some money off of the build that I have right here, you can go for the case I've shown you, the different RAM, and the stock cooler that your CPU comes with. So I'll put the price of mine right here, and I'll put the price of the cheaper one right here. Quite a bit of a difference. I, I'm going to do the math for it here in a sec, but it's probably going to be a little bit less. And of course, I've built these all out on kit.co, links in the description below, so if you want to build something like this yourself, you can. And finally, before I go, I have done some beauty shots of the new PC, and um, if you guys would like to see that, have a great day guys. I'll see you later. Shut up and sit down.